God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the dark. promise to never leave you nor forsake you and his word is true god is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good chose to die, fill us with his Holy Spirit, we can stand and testify that his love is everlasting and his mercies, they will never end. God is good.
You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life there's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom A saving He's a prison shaking Savior If you got chains He's a chain breaker We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight We've all run for things we know that just ain't right When there's a better life When there's a better life If you got pain If 
If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, well, he's a chain breaker.
the Lord this morning. Worship him. Worship the Lamb. Worship the Lamb. Worship the Lamb. Worship the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. He's holy, church. He's holy this morning. Lift your hands toward heaven. Lift your voices and worship the great I am. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy, Lord. He, Lord, you're worthy. Whoo, my Lord, my Lord. Lord, we give you all obedience this morning lord lord we offer you homage this morning lord oh hallelujah great play that for me more of you hallelujah 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 how many know we just need more of the lord this morning or let me say it like this this morning we need to give the lord more of us we need to give the Lord more of our attention, more of our love, more devotion this morning to Him. More. Make that your prayer this morning, church. Just worship the Lord right now. I've had my need. Yeah, Think about it, church. Are you hungry this morning? Are you hungry, church? Are you hungry for the Lord this morning? Are you hungry for the Lord this morning? Oh, Sharabaye Kadaburaho Tadalaka. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we make it our prayer this morning, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. This Lord, yes, Lord. I've had it all. But what I need is just more of you. Oh, he's your answer, church. He's your answer today. Kings, I've had my fear. And yet I hunger still. Hallelujah. Empty and bare. Lord, hear my prayer. Hallelujah, one more time. Glory to God. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord this morning. My Lord, yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way this morning, Lord. Holy Spirit, draw us, Lord. Draw us into your presence, Lord. Oh, but what I need is just more of you. Hallelujah. Just worship the Lord. He's here this morning, church. He's here for you this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs>
Corona, Corona, Sika, Tana, Tana, Oh, you're holy, Lord. You're holy, Lord. You're holy, Lord. Lord, I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. And yeah. This morning. Hallelujah. Somebody shout. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all our praise. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 I got to sing it. Sing some of that grace, grace, marvelous grace, folks. Aren't you glad for grace this morning? Aren't you glad for God's grace that he was enabled you to be brought into the family of God this morning? Woo! If you're saved, you ought to be singing this this morning. Thank you, Lord. 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 by the hand this morning. Father, we just pray right now, Lord, that your sweet, sweet, sweet Holy Spirit, Lord, would just flow in this room this morning. Lord, that it would touch hearts that are being affected. Lord, that our hearts that are being, Lord, dismayed this morning. Father, I rebuke the spirit of discouragement. Lord, I take authority over every foul spirit. Lord, over every unclean spirit. Lord, that is trying to distort, trying to pervert, trying to mislead. Lord, I take the authority right now in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Lord, that there would be a healing deliverance today. Lord, there will be a spirit of peace. Lord, a spirit of rejoicing right now. Lord, a spirit of deliverance. Lord, it will flow through these lives, flow through these homes, flow through these, my Lord, my Lord. Let the power of the anointing, Lord, of the Holy Ghost right now, Lord, begin to restore, begin to raise up, begin to build up this morning. God, begin to ignite, begin to ignite a fire, begin to ignite a flame, Lord, that will burn and burn and burn. Woo! Shalala kasadadaka. Father, I thank you for the precious blood of Jesus, Lord, that cleanses us, Lord, Lord, and makes us holy. Father, we rejoice in you right now. One more time, grace, hallelujah. Oh, thank God. rejoice in the Lord this morning. So, oh, come on. You can do better than that this morning. Thank God you've been saved. Thank God you've been delivered. Thank God you've been rescued. Thank God he saved you. He brought you out of a miry clay. He brought you out of a horrible pit, out of a horrible mess that you were in. He established you. Set your foot on a solid rock today. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Woo, he's given you every reason to rejoice today. Thank God, thank God. Turn to neighbor this morning and say, neighbor, we're going to make it. We're going to make it today. Praise God, praise God. Give the singers and musicians a big hand. Praise God, praise God, praise God. My, 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 my. I'm glad he's a chain breaker this morning. I'm glad he comes to bind up the, bro- the brokenhearted. He brings recovering of sight to the blind. He knows our every need this morning. Praise God. Children's church, you can be dismissed today. Thank you, Miss Tracy. Praise God. Good to have all of our guests with us today. Lord bless you. Lord love you this morning. Thank you guys for coming in. My goodness, from Chickasha and Pawnee. And I'm probably missing somebody. Ripley, we got them every direction this morning. God is good this morning. God is so good. Praise God. Had a good turnout in Sunday school. Classes were full this morning. Praise God for that. Praise God. Thank you for supporting Sunday school coming out. And it's good to be back in the podium this morning. Thank you, Brother Kevin, for filling in. Appreciate our associate. And we appreciate him and Miss Tracy tremendously. And but it's good to be back. Thank you for the prayers and thank you for allowing me to get away for a few days. And I found that you can hide from the cell phones and you can hide from the internet, but you can't hide from Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I said it's probably one of the cheapest vacations I've ever been on. I ate out one time. I was forced. <laughs> I was forced. Everybody was tired of, everybody was tired of Jesus and Viners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Time of rest and relaxation is priceless, folks. It is priceless. Thank God. So thank you for allowing that to happen in my life. Thank you. Ephesians. Ephesians, the first chapter. Ephesians, the first chapter. I, 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 after I, I own... Upon receiving this message from the Lord, I, I, I begin to dig in and dive into it, and I begin to see real quickly that I can't get all this done in 30 minutes this morning. So uh, I'm going to give you a good introduction today. How about that? 
there's enough in this introduction that will thrill your spirit and thrill your soul this morning. And uh, Lord bless you and Lord love you. We're going to make it. Praise God. You're my joy. You're my crown this morning, church. I'm looking forward to spending eternity with all of you. And uh, if we keep... Uh, and if we keep Biden in the White House, Jesus is coming sooner. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Have y'all been seeing what his agenda is? Have y'all been looking at it? Oh, praise God. He's got one of the best agendas I've seen in a long time. It just lets me know that we're getting closer and closer to the coming of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Praise the Lord. I don't mean to get political this morning, but I'm talking spiritual, folks. <laughs> Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. What this world is trying to put in place and what they're trying to, uh, to, uh, to apply to the people, oh, my Lord, it's the Word of God coming to light, and we're the generation that is seeing it, folks. I believe that you and I are going to be the generation that sees the coming of the Lamb of Almighty God. Amen. You are to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, we better get ready. Jesus is coming soon. I can rejoice in that. I can rejoice in that. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm just excited this morning to be in the house of the Lord. Not in some hospital. Not in some jail cell somewhere. Folks, we get to be in the house of the Lord. David said, I was glad. I was glad. I was glad. I was glad. When they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Praise God, praise God. Father, I love you. Lord, I just thank you for the spirit of joy that's in this place. Lord, I just thank you for the spirit of love. Lord, the spirit of unity. Lord, and the spirit of peace, the tranquility. Lord, that is here among the believers this morning. Father, we just celebrate, Lord, in the favor, knowing that we are the children of God. Lord, that we are the, the, the people of God today, Lord, who have been chosen, who have been called a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Lord, a peculiar people today. Father, we just celebrate. Lord, we celebrate in the divine favor, the divine goodness of God. Lord, we just rejoice in you. Lord, help us today, Lord, to receive and deliver this message. Uh, Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. amen. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1, I would, I'm going to title this message, The Purchased possession the purchase possession it comes out of Ephesians Ephesians chapter 1 down about verse number 14 if you want to look at that I I'm going to eventually get there maybe two or three sermons from now but I'm eventually going to get there but there is I, I have I have preached out of Ephesians numerous times I've studied Ephesians and I, it, it is a tremendous book as the Apostle Paul was in prison, he was imprisoned because of preaching the gospel, preaching the truth, that he was placed in a prison cell. And it was from that prison cell <clears throat> that he wrote a letter to the church at Ephesus. And he was telling them and encouraging them about all the spiritual blessings and the spiritual wealth that God had blessed them with. And uh, he gives us, a, 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 it's really a, 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 a eulogy, if you would please, a eulogy of God, his accomplishments, his past, present, and future blessings. It's a, Paul done a dynamic job when he wrote it. The, the church at Ephesus was one of the most leading churches in the church of Asia Minor during its time. And uh, so Paul was encouraging them, writing this letter to them. So let's pick it up in, in verse number one. I just want to kind of come as a, uh, a, 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 a teacher, if you would, this morning. I may get a preaching spirit, but right now I'm, I'm planning to come as a teacher so we can dissect these words and break them down for you. It says, the apostle Paul, he was an apostle of Jesus Christ. He was one of the last apostles that seen God, that God had called to be an apostle, one who could set up a church, one who has authority to, uh, to establish a church and establish leadership. That's what an apostle is. 
It's along the lines of a pastor, but it has the title of an apostle, and there still is. The ministry of the apostle is still relevant today. There are some that are still called apostles today. They're not pastors. They're not evangelists. They are apostles. And so uh, this ministry is still going to still part of the fivefold ministry. So the apostle, he says, Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paul said, I'm under his instruction. I'm under his influence. And he said, I'm writing this letter to the saints. You are the saints of God today. You are a holy people. That's a word we don't use a lot of the time. St. Peter gets more used than anybody else. But you are the saints. You are a holy people. You're a holy generation today, folks. You ought to say, thank God I am. Thank God I've been set apart. Thank God he has made me holy. Without holiness, no man's going to see the Lord. I'm thankful that by the will of God, he has called us holy. We didn't earn it. We didn't work for it. Didn't pay for it. Didn't buy it. But it's by the blood of Jesus he's made us holy. So number one is, you're the saints. And the apostle Paul, this letter may have been written back in, I think it was in, uh, uh, I wrote it down somewhere, uh, can't find it now. But it's still relevant for today. It is still relevant for today. And he says, These, the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful followers. Faithful followers. That is referring to you and I. That's who we are. You're the saints of God and you're the followers, the faithful followers. Somebody say, I'm a faithful follower. I'm a faithful follower. You need to start identifying who you are. The world has put identities up on us, but we need to identify who the Bible says we are. He says that we're holy, and he says that we are faithful followers in Christ Jesus. We're in Christ Jesus. Verse 2. Grace. We sung, aren't you glad for God's grace? Grace is unmerited, undeserved favor, but that out of God's goodness, out of God's love for you, out of God's kindness to you, he has given you and showed you and me grace. Thank God for grace. It's by grace through faith that we are saved. If it wasn't for grace, we wouldn't have a chance. Can you imagine what it would be to live under the Old Testament times and not have grace? And not have the inconstant, consistent infilling of the Holy Spirit. Church, we're living in the New Testament. We're a New Testament church where the grace came and the truth came by Jesus Christ. God has given us the consistent and the constant abiding presence of the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We are to be living victorious every day in our lives. We're to be the most happiest, excitingest, soul winning people there is. Don't get quiet on me in this Third Baptist Church this morning. Thank God for grace. Thank God for his grace. He said, grace be to you. And then he didn't stop there. He said, I'm going to add something else to that. I'm going to throw in some peace to you. Now, the peace he's talking about is the peace between you and God. But when you've got peace between you and God and you've made things right, you've made your heart right with God, you've got an inner peace that cannot be thwarted, but you've got an inner peace. And when you've got that peace, honey, you can have peace in the world. No matter what's going on around about you, no matter what kind of pain you're going through, no matter what kind of torment, no matter what kind of hell you're going through, honey, if you've got peace with God, you can be at peace in the midst of your storm today. I'm trying to keep that preaching spirit. It's coming. <laughs> there is a spirit of grace and there's a spirit of blessing and there's a spirit of peace that God has bestowed upon his people. And it comes from God, our heavenly father. You believe in God? Believe also in me. Let not your hearts be troubled. 
Thank God this morning. Thank God for his grace and his peace that comes from God. It doesn't come from Wall Street. It doesn't come from stocks and bonds. It comes from Almighty God and the greater intimacy relationship that we have with the Heavenly Father and a Holy God. How much greater are we going to... My Lord, my Lord. It's this grace and peace that comes from God, the Father of lights. And it comes from the Lord... Jesus Christ, the Lord. That's his title. That's his position. He became Lord because he was resurrected the third day. He overcame. He was, became Lord of all. If Lord is not Lord of all, he's Lord not, uh, he's Lord not. Uh, if the Lord ain't Lord of all, he's Lord not at all. He has, you have to place him at the headship of your life. He must be Lord. And he says this grace and that peace, it comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. What Paul is describing here, he said this is the Godhead. And they're in unity. They work in harmony. you got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There is a holy trinity today, folks. And each one has a specific purpose and a specific duty. And each one of them works a specific area in our lives today. Thank God for that. Thank God it takes all three to keep me in line. Amen. It took all three to save me. It takes all three to keep me. It takes all three to redeem me. It's going to take all three to get me out of here. Amen we got to have, we got to believe we're not a oneness, we're not a Jesus only, but we are a holy Trinitarian believing church today, amen. That's down to kind of weak. But we are. And Paul is describing that here. He says in verse 3, he starts out, this is interesting, between verse 3 and verse 14, <clears throat> you will not find... One period. You'll find semicolons. You'll find colons. You'll find commas. But from verses 3 to 14, it is one consecutive sentence. It is the longest sentence probably in the Bible. But it is a powerful sentence. What Paul started out with in verse 3 was praise. Praise. He started, some people call this a prayer. He started out with praise. And he took praise and he built praise upon praise upon praise. He took honor and he built upon honor. He took reverence. He continued just to build and he took on this thought and this thought led to another thought and that thought led to another thought and he, he just couldn't find a place to put a period. Folks, that's the way it is when we serve God. When you serve God, you just can't put a period because he just gets greater and greater and bigger and one air leads to the next and next to your life and you just get bigger and bigger and bigger. God just continues to bless us more and more and more. He said, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. He didn't say he's going to bless you. He said who already has blessed you. I said he already has blessed you and my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ. Yeah, honey, he has already blessed you. He has already blessed you with everything that you need. He has already blessed you with spiritual blessings. He has already given you every tool that you need. He's already given you every weapon that you need to overcome no matter what trial you're going through. God has already given you the resources for you to be on more than a conqueror today. Hallelujah. God has blessed you today, church. We act like we're running, act like we're defeated. We act like we're overcome. No, we're overcomers today. We're more than a conqueror today. You need to start saying, I am more than a conqueror today. You got the Trinity on your side. You've been blessed, and he's already given you all the spiritual resources. Let me remind you of something this morning, church. You have a Christian heavenly bank account. 
Every born again believing Christian has a bank account in heaven and God has already made a deposit in that account. Honey, all you got to do is withdraw. All you got to do is take it. It's all, honey, it's already there for you to overcome. My Lord, my Lord. Well, glory. That teaching spirit didn't last long. <laughs> God has given you a spiritual bank account that you will never have to worry about being withdrawn. You'll never get a phone call from the bank that says you're delinquent. You're over. My God, somebody ought to shout. Somebody ought to shout this morning. God has blessed. I said God has blessed his holy people who's called. You've been called. You've been separated. You've been called out to be a saint of God, to be a believer of God, to be a faithful follower of God. My Lord. He said, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He moved away. He moved away from what was material. And he took you to a higher plane. He took you to another sphere known as a spiritual realm. Because he uses the next term, in spiritual, in heavenly places. God took you from a place of being materialistic, and he placed you in a spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm is where you have, this is the fun part, where you have spiritual conflict. Ain't that exciting? God, I was having a good life. And you took me out of the material realm and you placed me in a place where I'm now going to have conflict and I'm going to have trials and I'm going to have controversy and I'm going to have all the, the evil coming against me. I'm going to be fighting against principalities and wickedness and high places. And God, you brought me in this room. He said, yes, I brought you into that so I could bring you out of something. Uh, Woo! Glory be to God. God has brought you to the place to where there's going to be spiritual warfare in your life. But I want to take you back. He said, I've already given you every spiritual weapon that you need. So when you come against a battle, I'm going to give you the power and the anointing that you can overcome that. Don't worry about where God places you because God's already blessed you. He's already blessed you enough that when you enter into that realm of conflict and there's episodes going on that's over your head. God said, I've already blessed you. Thank you, Lord. I need that courage today. Lord, I need that boldness today. Lord, I'm going to make a withdrawal of some peace today. Lord, I'm going to make a withdrawal of some strength. That Come on, somebody. My God, it's already in the bank account, church. Use it. Use it. He said he's already placed his treasure in earthen vessels today. He's already given you heaven's treasure. He's called you to a place of heavenly places into the, to the, the spiritual realm or the spiritual sphere this morning. It's where you have conflicts. It's where you fight your battles. Oh, my Lord. Then it goes into verse 4. Whew, Lord have mercy. According as he has chosen us. Many people said, I came looking for Jesus. I chose Jesus. No, he already chose you. He already, he already chose you. He's already given you every benefit of knowing God. That makes sense. He's already given you every benefit of knowing God. God and everything you need to know about growing spiritually, he's already given it to you. So God chose us to place that inside of us, to place that in these vessels, into these spiritual tents, so that we could grow thereby. He says right here, according as he has chosen 
us, I think of the song, Victory in Jesus. He sought me and he bought me. He sought me and he bought me. He sought me and he bought me. When you sing the song, I've got victory in Jesus. Why? Because he sought me and he bought me. He left the 99 to go and search for this old heathen man here. But he redeemed me by the precious blood of the land. And therefore I have victory in Jesus. Because he sought me and he bought me. He redeemed me. Brought me out of that mess. Brought me in the... My Lord. He has chosen me hold your spot go to Matthew go to Matthew the 24th chapter Matthew the 24th chapter Matthew 24 go to verse 22 Matthew 24 and 22 now we're living Matthew 24 right now folks shake in like Pentecostal this morning If you want to know where we're living at in this age, I mentioned a while ago Biden's agenda, Biden's program. God knows what he's doing, folks. Don't get worried. Don't get worried about what's going on. It may be disheartening. It may be discouraging to you. But don't lose hope because God's in control. And there has to be a person in, in, there has to be a person in office whom God can lead. There's a thing that what the Bible is speaking about is coming to fruition. So we see this, right? He said, there shall be great tribulation. Folks, we're living in what we call a tribulation time of our time, but it's not the great tribulation. We're going to have some tribulation. We're going to have some trials, especially as the the, the birth pains increase and increase and increase. As the baby gets closer, the pain is going to get more intense. The persecution is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. There will be more people that are going to be thrown in jail, persecuted. Let me move on. 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake. The word elect there means chosen ones. Except for the chosen ones' sake, those days should be sure. That's God's grace. That's God's grace. I'm glad that we don't have to spend any minute second more than we have to in these last days before the Lord comes. He's going to shorten the day so we won't have to go through all that tribulation period, tribulation time. Thank God for the rapture of the church. How many wants to go today? Well, the rest of you get the next bus out. I don't know. I am ready for the rapture to take place, folks. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come, come, Lord Jesus. Take us home. Take us out of here. It is time for people to quit lollygagging around in sin and start getting saved and get in church and serving God, living for God, selling out Jesus. Now he went and got quiet on me again. I preach about the blessings you want to shout, but I start talking about getting righteous and holy living. Thank you, Sister Fish. I appreciate that. He says in verse 22, he said, the elect's sake, the chosen. 20, 20, what is the next one after? It's in 20. uh, I wrote it down. I had to to forget it. 24. 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonder, insomuch if it were possible that they shall deceive the very elect as the chosen ones. Folks, the church had better be watchful and prayerful. Do not be deceived by the false prophets because they're out there. I said the false teachers, the false prophets, they're out there right now. And they're out there deceiving and they're working hard. They're being directed and they're being pushed by hell. Stay in your word. 
Stay in your word. Study your word. Get the word in you. Know the word. That way when the false prophets come around, you can withstand them. You can refute them with the word of God. Get this word in your heart. That's free this morning. All that in a bag of chips. We see the, we see the chosen one here many times. You can also look in verse 31. In verse 31. He said, and he shall send his angel with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Hallelujah. He's coming back after a chosen generation, church. He's coming back after a people that's looking for him. He's coming back after a people that's watching for him, who's had their lamps trimmed and burning. He's not coming back to the five foolish virgins, but honey, he's coming back after the wise virgins that have made preparation for him to come. Amen. We better get ready. I said the bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming after the elect. He's coming after the chosen people. Man, this gets me excited this morning. Now I know. I told you. I'm going to try to teach. But I just couldn't help it. You ought to tell your neighbor, Pastor, he, he just couldn't help himself. He just couldn't help himself. He just couldn't help himself. <laughs> but he says, according as he has chosen us in Christ. I'm glad I'm not chosen to somebody else. I've been chosen to be in Christ. The doctrine of election. The doctrine of election. He said he was chosen us before the foundation of the world. He knew when he created Adam and Eve that man was going to fall. Before he created them, he knew that man was going to fall. He knew that man was going to need to be redeemed. He knew that in himself there was going to be a penalty that's going to have to be paid. And he knew within himself that he himself would pay the penalty in his son Jesus to pay the penalty for you and I so that he could redeem us back into right, right, holy standing with the heavenly Father. That's the doctrine of election. That's the doctrine of predestination. God has given every man. He has dealt to every man the same measure of faith. It is up to us. Whether we receive that, what we do with that. Let me tell you something, folks. Each one of us is going to make a decision. Either to receive Christ or reject Christ. Each one of us, each one of each person in the Bible said, It is appointed unto man wants to die, and after this the judgment. That is Scripture. I want to know that I have been sought after. I've been bought. My penalty has been paid in full by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I am a redeemed child of God. I've been a purchased possession. I belong to Jesus Christ. I was purchased. I was bought with a price. I'm no longer not my, I'm no longer my own, but I belong to him. Hallelujah. Church, I belong to God. I belong to Jesus this morning. I'm a purchased possession. Being a purchased possession, he takes pride in me. He takes joy in me. He receives me as I was. He chose me. He chose me. Before the foundation of the world to do what? That we should be holy and be without blame, without fault, before him in love. I'm about to close. What God, we're going to write this down, this is good stuff right here. What God began in eternity past will be completed in God's eternity future. There's a whole lot of living going on between the cross and the rapture. There's a whole lot of living going on 
from the time I was born again until the time the rapture takes place because when the rapture takes place, I will be instantly healed. I will be instantly sanctified. I will be instantaneously glorified. Honey, I've got one chance to become holy by God, to live a holy life, to live a life of redeemed life. So that I could gain some jewels in my crown that when I get to heaven, I can take my crown off and lay it at the feet of Jesus because I want to serve him faithfully. I want to serve him thankfully. I'm not serving God out of drudgery. I'm not serving God because mama told me to get to church or she's going to fan my hide. I'm serving God because I want to serve him. I serve God because I want to go to church. I love God because I desire to love him. To whom much is given, to whom much is given, much is required. He who has been forgiven much, loveth much. I know what God forgave me of. So therefore, I know what I've been forgiven of. I know what I've been delivered from. So therefore, I get to, in love, I get to serve him. I get to serve him thankfully. I'm so thankful for Jesus this morning. I'm so thankful that he's brought me out. He has called me to be holy because he has set me apart. You know why? So that I could reflect his nature in a sin sick world. He didn't call me to be holy so I could be legal to go out and sin now under grace. God called me to be holy. He set me apart so I could go out and be an ambassador, so I could be in a representative, so I could be one who is sharing and, 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 and showing the world the nature and the goodness and the kindness and the love of Almighty God. He called, He separates me for that purpose. So if there's a purpose that God brings us out, if there's a purpose for why God, if there's a purpose why God redeems us, and there's a purpose why God makes us holy and without blame before Him, there should be a response to that. There should be a response for us. It's kind of like the jigsaw. It goes down and it goes up. It's called a reciprocating process. The jigsaw cuts up and down. As God blesses us downward, we in return respond back to God with what? If we're going to, if we're going to use the word here, before him in love, then love must be first. We love him because he first loved us. So we respond back to him in love. Number two, we respond back to him in genuine, heartfelt, true Worship. Worship comes in many packages, many shapes designed, but we can worship him. And thirdly is we get to honor him with our service. In case you didn't notice, I talked about this about three or four weeks ago. This is a church service. Church service. We come to serve the Lord. We enter into his service. When we come in these doors, we're doing this service. We don't come just as spectators, but we come as participators. We get to be involved. We get to be engaged. We don't just come as the church, but we come to be the church. So we serve the Lord. We come to love the Lord. We come to worship the Lord. We come to serve the Lord with thankfulness for his wonderful, marvelous grace that he is so richly Bestowed upon us. Glory to God. I did good. I did good. I made my introduction. (laughs) Not too bad for a 30 minute opener. (laughs) Folks, I'll say this more we serve a good God. We serve a good God who's full of grace, who's full of mercy for you and I. He has blessed us with all. You ought ought to shout this morning. Say, Lord, I thank you that I have been so richly blessed. My spiritual bank account is full and running running over. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning that you're still mighty to save. You're still mighty to heal. 
Lord, you're still mighty to deliver. Lord, you're still mighty to redeem. You're still mighty to set free today. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit of heaven, Lord, that you would descend upon this congregation, upon our media church, Lord, that is watching, that is listening, that is tuned in this morning. Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, would enter that living room, enter that vehicle, enter that electronic device right now as you convict, as you convince, as you draw that heart right now. Lord, as you empower that soul. Father, we're praying right now, Lord, that you'd give us souls in this last hour. Lord, we're living in the last days before the rapture, Lord. Lord, help us to be prayerfully, watchfully, Lord, anticipating your absolute imminent return. Father, I pray for this congregation of saints. I pray for this congregation of holy followers, believers, faithful followers of Christians, Lord, that are serving you with all of their hearts. Lord, they're serving you. Lord, out of kindness and graciousness this morning, Lord. Father, I thank you for all the spiritual blessings, Lord, that have, you have endued upon us. That you've established a spiritual heavenly bank account, Lord, that we can make withdrawals from. During times that we feel like we're going through famines or times that we're fractured and broken or destitute. Father, you've given us everything we need to overcome. You've given us everything we need, not to survive, but to thrive. Father, I pray right now as you draw us into your sweet presence, Lord, as you just continue to deal with, deal with us with your goodness. Lord, of your precious, precious, precious redeeming blood, Lord, that you saved us. Father, that we may bear your identity that we may bear your nature in a corrupt, perverted world. Lord, help us to shine as lights. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for the goodness of God, the grace, supernatural grace, an unmerited favor. We didn't deserve it, but God, that's who you are. You're a generous God who loves us, and you've shown us that love. Father, we thank you for that right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. I never like to close without giving an altar call. Number one, if for someone here who doesn't know Jesus, young or old, it's never too late. Young or old, this morning, if you don't know Jesus, he's your personal Savior. Would you raise your hand? Would you come on down? Say, Pastor, I need Jesus this morning. Maybe you're walking in an area that you're not where you are to be with the Lord. Maybe you're, maybe, you're, maybe you're walking away from the Lord in a backslidden condition. Maybe you're estranged. Maybe your walk is cold right now. Maybe you say, Pastor, I just need to get closer to the Lord this morning. I just want to get closer to the Lord. I want to get this. I want, I want to be like John the I want to be like John the Revelator. I just want to just lay my head up on his bosom. Maybe we desire a closer walk with the Lord this morning. You can have it. If you desire it, you can have it this morning. You can have more of the Lord. If, you need, if you're here this morning and you're broken, if you feel like a broken piece of pottery that's been fractured, allow the Holy Spirit to just begin to mend that broken hearted just right now. Allow God to restore that broken and let him begin to heal that. Whatever you need right now is found in Jesus, is found in the cross. I'm going to open up these altars for any of those reasons or, or, or beyond that. I would invite you to come on down. Let's get in these altars this morning. If you're just hungry, pray for our nation. Pray for our people this morning. Church, our nation needs a healing this morning. Our churches need a healing. Thank God there's people coming. There's people coming right now. There's others who will just come on right now. Folks, God is here to help you this morning. God is here to help you. He's here to restore you. I need some prayer warriors. I need some people of prayer. Come on, church. I need some errands, and I need some hers this morning. I need some gap standers. Who's going to stand in the gap and intercede and begin to pray the prayer of faith? That the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Church, if we're going to see a deliverance, let's call upon the deliverer today. I need some prayer warriors. I need some prayer warriors. Come on down, church. We got people that are hurting. We got people that are broken this morning. If that's you, come on down. Don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss the opportunity this morning. God has given whatever you need. 
Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God.
just stand at our feet this morning. Give God one more worship service this morning. You are worthy of all praise. To you, our hearts, we raise. Hallelujah. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Sing it one more time this morning. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Hallelujah. You are, Lord, we love you this morning. You are awesome. This place I am a father, you are worthy of all praise, to you our hearts we raise, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands toward heaven, Father, we love you this morning. Father, we thank you for your great grace. Lord, we thank you that your hand has not been shortened. Father, but your hand has been so graciously extended. Lord, we're debtors to you this morning. We thank you for the cross. Thank you for the precious blood. Father, we thank you for the power of the resurrection. And Lord, we anticipate the coming of the Lord. Father, we give you praise and glory. Be with our people. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. It's good to have Miss Robin with us today. If you haven't met her, go by and get, it, get acquainted with her today. Good to have her and all the other guests that you're dismissed in Jesus' name. Remember service at 6, prayer rooms at 530.